So yeah, the thousand word curse. I wonder if it's exactly a thousand words. I just want to learn about the cabbages. I want to know. This guy was really good at growing cabbage. And all of a sudden now with this curse, he can't grow cabbage. I think the guy basically covered everything in that thousand word curse, including Nebuchadnezzar of all things. So... It's Liam Mouse Vlog, Liam Mouse Vlog, it's Liam Mouse's Vlog. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, Leah Mouse Vlog, Leah Mouse Vlog, Leah Mouse Vlog. And my cat says hi too. <laughs> I want to say a very special welcome and thank you to all my new subscribers. That was kind of cool. That uh, whole Eugenia Cooney rabbit hole thing uh, was like way more uh, viewed than I anticipated. <laughs> so, uh, yay. <laughs> so I actually made an effort this time, you know. Uh, I feel like crap. Uh, normally I wouldn't be recording a video right now, but, uh, I can't sleep because I feel like crap. So I figured, why not throw in some makeup, feel a little bit better about myself, and record a video. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> Hi, Houdini. <laughs> All right, since she's being so cute, you guys gotta see. This is Teeny Houdini. She's very excited to be here. She's my little sweetie poo. And Watson, my other kitty, is right there. And they're sniffing each other. And Houdini ran away. Okay, so also for all you new subs, uh, I'm extremely long-winded before I get to the point. I apologize for that. We're gonna try to cut at the chase today. Okay, so today we're gonna be covering the topic and following down the rabbit hole of the Elliot's Curse, Scotland. That's all the information I can give you right now because that's all it says in my notes. <laughs> but first I guess I have to do the intro. Welcome to another episode of Rabbit Hole Theater! But first, as always, we have to light a candle. I already have two lit back here. This is the old school ring light is what we're doing right now. I have two woodwick candles, so if you're hearing like a... In the background, it's because I have two woodwick candles burning back there. They're very small, but they are giving some nice, uh, much needed light from up here. But I am going to light Haunted Library by Underworld Connection. It's always gonna be my candles, okay? I have like seven million of my candles sitting around here and I need to burn through them. <laughs> no pun intended, but I need to get through them. So this is Haunted Library and it is one of my favorites. It is wonderful. It's like cinnamon, leather, and something else. Ooh, and I haven't even lit this one yet, so it's still got the perfect little swirl on the top. So we're gonna light this guy and get going. Sorry for blinding you. <laughs> Haunted Library. And if you want to get yourself one of my awesome candles, check the link in the description for the Underworld Connection link to my website shop, also available on Etsy. Okay, shameless self-promo over. Hey, you know what? Lots of YouTubers have their own merch and they plug it in all their videos. At least I make my own merch, okay? I create it, design it, make it, ship it, and send it myself. So props for me for not outsourcing or whatever. The cats are just roaming around. We got Houdini back here. Watson's over here tearing up the carpet, man. And then, and then the dog, the dog is there on the bed. You see him? He's there being all cute. Okay, let's do this. Okay, my boyfriend told me about this one. From what he told me, it is really freaking cool. And it is definitely worth diving down the rabbit hole. And I have not looked up anything about this. I don't even remember what it was about. He told me about it months ago because he heard about it on a podcast or something. And he told me about it and I was like, oh, this would be perfect for that rabbit hole thing that I want to do. Sorry, I'm looking for my vape. Oh, I gotta have my vape. Side note, I have some Blue Bunny cookies and cream ice cream that is sitting here melting all over my floor. Pardon me for enjoying it while we unpack this. So what we're gonna do is we are going to record my screen. So we're gonna look up the Elliot Curse, Scotland, and see what we get. Yes, the Elliot Curse Scotland is exactly what I meant, thank you. Okay, so I don't know anything about this because a boyfriend told me about it. You stay out of my ice cream. I should remember ice cream. So I don't know if what I'm seeing is like correct. By the way, how rude am I? How many people eat ice cream? Like normal people have like some coffee or tea or like a Red Bull or something. I'm eating cookies and cream ice cream because I am the shit. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, what is the curse of the Elliots? There it is. Okay. Oh, 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 o
I found it. I'm blurry. I'm blurry. <laughs> I'm sorry about the lighting going in and out. It's stupid. If I had a ring light, this would all be better. But if I had a ring light, you can see like the cool colors and stuff behind me. Anyway, I'm sorry. Okay, this is what it was. I remember him telling, okay, I cursed their head and all the hairs of their head. I cursed their face, their brain, innermost thoughts. Their mouth, their nose, their tongue, their teeth, their forehead, their shoulders, their breast, their heart, their stomach, their back, their womb, their arms, their legs. Legs? That is definitely not how you spell legs. That's eggs with an L. Their hands, their feet, and every da 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 da. Okay, so the curse of the Elliot. So, okay, let's do the curse of the Elliot. Okay, I just spelled it wrong. Okay. Aha! Found it! Boom! Okay, this is it. This is super cool. Blur! So, in 1525, the Archbishop of Glasgow, Glasgow? Glasgow? I don't know. I'm an American. I don't know things. Placed a curse on the Elliot family. Now, 500 years later, one very unlucky branch of the Elliots. Check this out. Just, just a little bit of from what, uh... <laughs> what? Scrabby is on high alert and I don't know why. A leaf must have blown by the house or something. Anyway, so, okay, this is the podcast. Maybe this is the one that he listened to. Yeah, heavyweights! Yeah, heavyweight. That That's the podcast that my boyfriend listened to. Oh my god. Okay, so I don't want to listen to the podcast. I would rather just look it up. Here we go. Here's something we can read. Okay. The thousand word curse that caused havoc five centuries after it was made. I know I just, in my last, oh my God, so many ads. Oh my God. Bet you guys can't guess what I do on the side. <laughs> I got all these ads for soy wax. Buy some candles at underworldconnection.com right now. <laughs> okay, so the thousand word curse that caused havoc five centuries after it was made. In the late 16th century, the Archbishop of Glasgow, Gavin Dunbar, issued a thousand word curse that is still causing concern <laughs> 500 years on. So in the 16th century, the Scottish borders were like the Wild West. Okay, so there's raiding and stuff. There they are doing their raiding. Woohoo, we're on horses going through the stuff. The Archbishop of Glasgow decided to put a stop to the anarchy. He excommunicated the Rivers and issued a thousand word curse to be delivered from every pulpit in the word that I can't pronounce. Again, American, don't know things. So remember, this is 1525, okay? The Archbishop of Glasgow, not a gypsy woman, not a witch, not some weird little troll guy with like magical powers, okay? The Archbishop of Glasgow, just like a dude. He's just a dude, right? Okay, so he's, he's a dude doing his dude thing from his Archbishop Tower or whatever in 1525, okay? I mean, maybe he's got like a, voodoo witch advisor? I don't know. Sometimes they had those. I'm saying they did because this is weird. The curse reads as follows. I curse their head and all the hairs of their head. I curse their face, their brain, their mouth, their nose, their tongue, their teeth, their forehead, their shoulders, their breast, their heart, their stomach, their back, their wombs, their arms, their legs, their hands, their feet, and every part of their body from the top of their head to the soles of their feet before, behind, and within, and without. I'm sorry, I couldn't just read it straight. That would have been boring. Okay, so anyway, because the church had less power in this region, most found the curse to be amusing rather than concerning. It was not until King James, the Roman numeral of Scotland, also became the ruler of England in 1603 that the border's raiding was finally resolved. The king ordered the offenders should be executed or deported, putting an end to most of the criminal activity. The criminal activity in the region. The Cursing Stone. Centuries later, local artist Gordon Young was commissioned to create an art installation for Carlisle's Millennium Gallery. This is now 2001. We are in our current century. Young designed the Cursing Stone, which included 383 words of Gavin Dunbar's curse. The sculpture was made by Andy Altman and was installed at the end of an 80 meter long path, which bears the name of every Borders River family. Okay, so there's the stone. There it is. So following the stone's installation, several local tragedies occurred, okay? Including an outbreak of foot and mouth disease. He cursed their feet and their mouth, right? Right, that was part of the shit, okay? Floods, a fire, and several job losses. And look at this. The town's football team was also relegated. 
Ain't that a kick in the head. Some Carlisle residents blamed the stone for these events. The Bishop of Carlisle, the Rights Reverend Graham Dow, invited the Archbishop of Glasgow, obviously probably the current one, not the same one. <laughs> I would hope not, anyway. To visit the town and bless the stone in order to lift its curse. A spokesman said the Archbishop would not be visiting Carlisle to lift the curse. Well, that's just rude, okay? Like, I know you weren't the one who did it. The one who did it has been dead for a very long time. At least, let's hope, because I don't know. If he has the power to make this curse, maybe he has the power to outlive us all. I don't know. But we're gonna assume it was a different guy <laughs> with the same title. Well, he probably just thought it was fiddly foo. So yeah, okay. So this guy ordered the council to destroy the stone or remove it from the town, right? So they considered the, the request, but the stone is still there. So from my understanding, there is more to it than this. I know there's more to it because boyfriend, the, the podcast, that heavyweights podcast went into it deeply. And I don't want to pull up the whole podcast because I don't want to, like, if you are interested, go check out the Heavyweight Podcast, look for this episode, and I've heard that the podcast in general is really, really good, because Boyfriend listened to it, really liked it, it was actually recommended to him by somebody else who really, really liked it, so if you're in a podcast, I'm just going to go ahead and plug them right now, because I'm not going to steal their content and use it for my own, I just don't want to do it, so go check out the Heavyweight Podcast at your local podcast dealer. I, I don't know, I don't listen to podcasts. I'm assuming it's on Spotify. Okay, let's see what we can find on YouTube about this. The Curse of the Elliots, because the readable stuff isn't really helping us out. Come on, there's gotta be something. Okay, that's the Cursing Stone. How is there nothing about this? Okay, Curse of the Elliot. How is there nothing about this? Oh my god, there's just that one podcast? Are you serious? I don't want to steal their content. I don't want to. If it was a video, it'd be different because we both would have something to look at and watch, but I'm not just gonna sit here and like listen to a podcast, you know, on the video. Okay, there's gotta be. Let's look at images. Oh, that's fuzzy. There was more to it. There were like potatoes involved. I know, my boyfriend told me that there were potatoes. How did the heavyweight guy get more information than I can with all of the internet right now? We're gonna put in potatoes. We're gonna add potatoes to our query. All right. Yep, there's my Spotify. Okay, so credits. Okay, so how did you track all this stuff down, dude? Good job, Jonathan Goldstein. You are much more resourceful than I am. <laughs> Fine. 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 We'll see what they have to say. I'm, we're not listening to the whole thing, okay? We're not doing it. I just want to hear a snippet. Since I can't find anything else. What? I'm trying to remember. Do you have any celebrity impressions that you do? No. Didn't you used to do Celine Dion? No, I didn't do Celine Used to do Dion. That, the theme song to the <laughs> Titanic? No, that was Karen. Karen used to sing that song? Karen does sing that song. Does she have a nice voice? No. Because guess who I have on the other line? Karen? <laughs> Did that scare you? So if you're interested in checking out the Heavyweight Podcast, my boyfriend told me that I think all, if not almost all, whatever, the episodes start off like that. Like he calls his friend and plays like a little joke and like she gets fake mad or riled up or whatever and it's really entertaining. So he said that that's really, really funny. So I guess they start off like that. But we're not here to do that, so. And Dylan says it's not just him. He tells me about his brother, a talented gardener who can grow anything except cabbages. Hmm. The one thing that's mentioned in the curse. The curse says, I curse their cabbage patches. And he can't grow cabbages. He can't grow brassicas at all. The Elliot curse, cabbages. I was wrong. It's not potatoes. Excuse me. This is Scotland, not Ireland. All right, here we go. Okay, I was looking up the wrong surface of the sun. The border rivers, that's what we should have been looking up. Okay, we're gonna copy that for future Googling. 
purposes. Okay, so there is definitely more to it than what we read before. So I curse them going and I curse them riding. I curse them standing and I curse them sitting. I curse them eating and drinking, rising, lying. Curse them at home. Curse This guy had way too much time on his hands. Can you imagine? You're the Archbishop of Glasgow and you basically write this really weird poem thing just out of spite like, I understand there was raids going on, and, like, it sucks. But, like, he actually, like, I can just picture him and sitting in, like, his little royal bed or whatever, right? You know, with, like, the draperies and stuff, with, like, the four posters. He's, like, got the candlelight on. He's got, like, his little royal nightgown on or whatever. I don't know what archbishops wear. <laughs> let's, let's see. Archbishop clothing of 1500s. I just want to be picturing this correctly, you know? That's what this guy is wearing. How about bed clothing? Would they really know though? I mean, would they really know? Okay, whatever. I'm, I'm just picturing him there and he's like surrounded by like the candle, you know, little candelabras or whatever. And he's like all hunkered up in like, you know, his bed with like his little notepad and like a pillow and it's all like all propped up against the thing. And he's just like, I cast the head and all the hairs of the head. I cast their face, their brain, you know, those thoughts, their mouth, their nose, hmm, what else? Oh, yes, their tongue. <laughs> I mean, obviously he would have a Scottish accent. I curse them going, I curse them riding, I curse them standing, and I curse them sitting. Boyfriend can do the Scottish accent, I can't. So anyway, all right, so we got the outside of the, I mean, basically cursed every single thing here, like the wives, the children, the servants. I mean, this is like a regular Job job. Those two words are spelled the same. Job job. If you don't know who Job is, fall down your own rabbit hole. I'm not going to help you. Anyway, let's see. So the livestock, the da 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 da. All right, where's the cabbages? Good God, this is long. Okay, <laughs> may the evil, may the evil that fell upon cursed Cain when he slew his brother Abel needlessly fall on them for their needless slaughter that they commit daily. <laughs> is that Scottish or is that Irish? I always confuse the two. I don't know. I'm trying. Yeah, this is like super long. Holy crap. But that's the whole big thing. Ah, oh, Nebuchadnezzar. God bless him. He wrote out Nebuchadnezzar. He actually took the time to write. I wonder if he had to look that up. I wonder if he was like, ooh, may the malediction that fell upon Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. Where's my Bible? Grabs his Bible. He's like, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar. N-E-B-U-C-H. Yes, Nebuchadnezzar. Okay. He puts the Bible down and then he's like, Nebuchadnezzar, Lieutenant. I would have had to spell check Nebuchadnezzar. I don't know about you, but I would have. Okay, so where's the bit about the cabbages? And finally, after all of this, and finally, I condemn them perpetually to the deep pit of hell, there to remain with Lucifer and all his fellows. God. Wow. Okay, seriously, where's the cabbages? Find. Next. Cabbage. There it is. Okay, I bring ill wishes. Their hails, their chambers, their kitchens, their stanchions, their barns, their cowsheds, their barnyards, their cabbage patches, their plows, their harrows, and the goods and houses that are necessary for the sustenance welfare. Okay, so, all right. I guess this is probably the same thing, though. Okay, so, yeah. All right, Facebook. Let's look at that one now. This is the whole history here that we just kind of covered. So, yeah, the thousand-word curse. I wonder if it's exactly a thousand words. I'm gonna be upset! If it's only 999. That's false advertising. Freaking Nebuchadnezzar. That should count for three words. I just can't even believe he even did that. Uh, aftermath. <laughs> did you see that? It definitely popped up. Hold on. Dang, did you see that real quick? It definitely said the cabbages. It did. I swear to God, I didn't make that up. Okay, whatever. Okay, we got into a, a weird spot. Okay. Curse. Cab. I already did this. Okay. The Hogwarts Legacy. What? No. And no, I don't want to track my family's past. What is going on here? Jeremy Cabbage in the Living Museum of Human Oddballs. Okay. We're going to go back to this and we're going to follow these source links. 
because I want to know the rest. I want to know the rest of the story. We can close that. Oh, the, the page is not found. The page is not found. Uh, I didn't know what to do now. We're going to click this one and see where it takes us. Zip! That page is not found either. What is with all the 404? We don't like seeing the 404. I haven't seen the 404 era in quite some time. What? What is going on? I just want to learn about the cabbages. Good God, man. I want to know. Okay, so based on what boyfriend told me, a lot of this stuff was removed. Hello! I did my makeup, focus on my face. That's all I ask, okay? Based on what boyfriend told me that they cover in this episode of the podcast here is that Guy, like he just said, that he was awesome at growing cabbages, right? But specifically the cabbages. Now, I feel like zeroing in on that is a little unfair because to be fair, I think the guy basically covered everything in that thousand word curse, including Nebuchadnezzar, of all things. So... I mean, it's still kind of weird. So this guy was really good. Stop it! This guy was really good at growing cabbage. And all of a sudden now with this curse, he can't grow cabbage. I feel like from what my boyfriend told me that they finally got, I think it was the, the current current Archbishop of Glasgow to come and remove the curse and suddenly they could grow cabbages again. Basically, long story short, that's kind of how it went down. I've been pretty successful growing all different types of vegetables. This is Dylan's younger brother, Rory Elliott. But like the cabbages in particular, like always seem to be afflicted by some kind of like mold or fungus. Then there's Rory's feet. My mom always said that my feet were like that of a buzzard. Pretty much talons, yeah. And his eyes. I tore my cornea. I had to wear an eye patch. And mouth. I've had so many mouth ulcers. I've just been worried that it's like the curse trying to stop me talking to you guys and the evidence is semi-undeniable. Like how the Archbishop curses them going and curses them riding. I assume that he meant riding horses, but um, I guess it covers bicycles. Okay, what, what, what has happened? Like for instance, one time I was um, cycling to get some seaweed to put on my crops because they weren't doing <laughs> very well. His crops <clears throat> being the cabbages, Rory was getting seaweed for his cabbages. And, um, there was an iron bar in the ground, and then I ended up going like head over the handlebars and like flying head first into a dog food factory. So, sorry, did you say you f you flew into a dog food? That's that's what I was just gonna say. I'm like, did he seriously just say he fell into a dog food factory? Can you imagine? You're trying to grow this cabbage crop. And you're like really good at growing cabbages normally, right? But there's this damn curse that just is hanging around and won't leave you alone and it's making your cabbages moldy. So, you ought to get some seaweed on your bicycle to help your cabbage crop along, as one does. And you flip over the freaking front of your handlebars and land in a dog food factory. I mean, that's just adding insult to injury at that point. I want to know more about this freaking Archbishop. We're, no, we're done with the clothing. Of Scotland, no, 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 of Glasgow in 1525. Like, was he a voodoo priest in his spare time? Did he have one of those like cavernous underground dungeons where he met with his friends and did the robes and like, oh, oh. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of what I'm picturing. So Gavin Dunbar. What's your story? What is your story, Gavin Dunbar? I'm not prepared for that every single time. Okay, so he did stuff. Yeah, he's known for his monition of cursing against the border arrivers. Yes, we know that. But was it his first curse? Had he practiced on like his friends and family first? Like he seems to have nailed the curse thing. Like he's got it down at this point. If he wrote, a thousand word curse that's still active in the 21st century. I'm thinking the guy knew what he was doing. You know, there had to be something behind this, right? So he died then, which is 
cool. It places Dunbar among the greatest, gra ooh, places Dunbar among the greatest cursors of all time. Okay, so priests in all the parishes were required to read out the curse to their congregations. Wow, man, he was, he was serious. If this guy had a whole bunch of people focused on the energy of sending this curse out there, it actually manifested as real. And it seems to have done so from the very limited information that I found. But if you want to listen to that heavyweight podcast, I definitely recommend it. It is episode 51, The Elliots. And I fully credit this fellow, Jonathan Goldstein, with doing us a great service by researching this and getting in touch with these people and talking about it or however he did it. I don't know. I didn't actually listen to the podcast. This is the first I've heard it today with you guys. So I'm sorry that I couldn't find too much more about this Elliot's curse. I really thought that there was going to be a wealth of information about it, but that is the beauty of the rabbit hole. You never know until you travel down it. Uh, but bonus points, you got to hear my awesome Scottish accent. Yeah, if you want to check out the Heavyweight Podcast, um, I can't personally recommend it, but my boyfriend likes it, and he has excellent taste, clearly. <laughs> and if you want to do your own research on that, that could be cool. It kind of sucks that there's no YouTube videos about this, but I guess this will be the first one. And it didn't even have that much information in it, but I tried. God help me, I tried, and I tried to make it interesting. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Rabbit Hole Theater. And if you have any suggestions for future Rabbit Hole Theaters, just type a brief topic. Don't go into detail. Just, uh, you know, type it down below. Let me know what you guys would like to see. Let me know if you're enjoying the series. I definitely want to do more. This is super fun. They take a long time to edit, but since I figure I'm laid up with the illness, not not the illness, sorry, I'm, I'm just ill with an illness, not the illness, you know what I mean. <laughs> since I'm laid up, I have the time um, because clearly I'm not going to bed tonight. So I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love you. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. More. Give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment. Don't forget to check out my awesome candles at underworldconnection.com. The link is in the description below. Don't forget to watch out for the sheep as always. And vlog phrase of the day is don't curse my cabbages. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Y'all are awesome. Okay, bye.